Some people consider the Ouija board to be nothing more than a toy. However, the mystery and psychological power that the board can have over people is a serious concern. Some people claim that the board has the ability to accurately predict the future, or that it harbours terrible and evil forces. Others believe that it provides a channel through which the user can communicate with the spirits of the dead. Whatever you believe, these are five stories that haven't ended well for the users. Number 5. Coward Two friends decided to use a Ouija board. They planned to use the board to mess around with. At first, one of them was hesitant, but agreed to do it as long as she didn't have to participate. After she had the board set up, her friend asked, Is there anyone in here? There was no reply. So, being the foolish teenager that he was, he violently said, If anything is in here and not talking, you're a coward. The board was put away after that. A week later, he was sleeping upstairs on his couch. He woke up for no reason. He looked around to see what could have woken him up and couldn't see a thing, but felt as if he was being watched or like something was in the room. After attempting to get back to sleep, he suddenly heard from downstairs, Get the boy, in a chilling voice. The hairs on his neck stood up and he started to shake. He opened his eyes and listened, but heard nothing. He once again attempted to go back to sleep and then heard again, get the boy. It was much louder this time. Then the downstairs door slammed shut and he felt a burst of cold air. All he could think about was the Ouija board. Number four, the case of Nellie Hurd. In 1935, a man named Herbert B. Hurd shot his wife four times in the back. Arrested by police at the time of the incident, the 78-year-old husband described his stressful relationship with his wife following her consultations with a Ouija board. Mrs. Nellie Hurd claimed to receive messages from the Ouija board about her husband's infidelity. The board allegedly told her that her husband gave his mistress a great deal of money. After each consultation with the Ouija board, the wife would give her husband a dark look and announce that she'd caught him in yet another lie. Over the course of several weeks, the wife tied him to the bedpost with wire and whipped his body with knotted ropes. She used a burning poker to wound him and stabbed him in the shins with a knife. Finally, under the brunt of bodily torture, he confessed anything she wanted to hear just so that she would stop. Satisfied with his confession, she left a gun on the nightstand. Freed, yet still terrified, the husband seized the gun and shot her in the back before she could inflict any further harm. The courts ruled the murder a justifiable homicide, since the husband was reasonably in fear for his life. Number 3. You can't hide secrets from a Ouija board. One summer, three middle school boys discovered a Ouija board in a bin outside a local apartment building. Tom, the oldest, was terribly cruel and a bully to the younger boy, Josh. The third boy, Chris, would avoid the abuse by remaining silent. Secretly, Chris and Josh disliked Tom's behaviour, but they tolerated it because they had no other friends. That summer, the three boys took the discovered Ouija board to Tom's house, where he was alone most of the time anyway. His father was always working and his mum had passed away years before. As the three boys sat in the middle of the living room, with their hands on the planchette, they became bored after 20 minutes of waiting. When they were just about to give up, the planchette budged. Finally, it spelled out, Get away. Get away? I live here, Tom shouted. The planchette started moving more briskly in a figure of eight. Now. That's weird. I wonder what it means, Chris said, glancing at Tom and Josh. He looked back at the board. Where should we go? Chris asked. It hurts. This is stupid, Tom said. He looked at Josh and Chris. You guys are doing this. We'll test it. Josh, let go. Josh removed his hand from the planchette. Now ask it a question that only you will know, Tom ordered. Josh immediately asked, Who is the person that keeps hitting me? Tom gave Josh a nasty glare, but the planchette was already moving quickly. Ask Tom, it answered. This is stupid, Tom said. Dad, the board spelled. Huh? Chris said, staring at the board. I think that answer was for Tom. He glanced up at Josh, and they exchanged confused expressions. Dad, it spelled again. 
Tom's breathing started to accelerate. His face turned red and sweat formed on his brow. Dad, it spelled a third time. Tom jumped up and ran from the room crying. It was the first time Josh and Chris had ever seen or heard Tom cry. They only learned a few days later that Tom's father routinely abused him. Somehow the Ouija board knew Tom's innermost secret. Number 2. Jake Cindy was only 13. She was the middle child within a large, devoutly Christian family. She had three older sisters, a younger sister and a younger brother. At some point during the 8th grade, a friend let her borrow a Ouija board one weekend. And that weekend, Cindy and her older sisters played with the board. They did it in secret, late at night, because they knew how strongly their parents would disapprove. That weekend, the mysterious talking board mesmerised Cindy. She became obsessed with it. She could think of nothing else and soon had a list of questions that she wanted to ask the board. Cindy had an hour every day after school where she was alone in the house, before her older sisters returned from high school. On Monday afternoon, right after getting home from school, she cautiously crept up to her room, set up the Ouija board on her bed, and gently laid her fingertips on top of the pointer. After just ten minutes of sitting quietly, the planchette started to jerk softly across the board. It spelled out, Hi. Cindy's breath caught in her throat. Hi? She quickly answered. Who are you? The planchette then spelled out, Jake. A chilling sensation ran through Cindy. Jake was a friend of hers who had died in a car accident in the fourth grade. Jake, is it really you? Cindy sat up, her arms shaking with excitement. The pointer quickly moved to say, yep. Yeah. Over the next hour, Cindy held a conversation with Jake. Every day after school, Cindy would race up to her room and have a conversation with Jake about her life and about her future. But after a few days, the conversations became darker and angrier. By the second week, Cindy had the impression that she wasn't talking with Jake at all, but instead a dark and terrible imposter. By the end of the second week, the entity revealed itself as a demon and threatened Cindy that if she told anyone about their conversations, she would die. That Friday night, when her sisters got home, they found Cindy curled up in a corner crying. It took a week in a mental facility before Cindy could recover from the emotional damage that the entity caused her during those two fateful weeks of her childhood. Number 1. Diablo One boy did a Ouija board with a few friends. He set it up along with candles all around it. His friend Matt asked the first question, Is anyone there? There was no response. After asking more questions, the friends still had no answers. Then suddenly the TV turned on. Brushing this off as a technical fault, they then started to notice that each of the candles in the room were being put out one by one things got worse. Matt once again asked, who is there? And the planchette started to move. It spelled out Diablo. Then the planchette started to move frantically and started spelling out, get out, get out. They all jumped up and switched the lights on and set fire to the board. It wasn't until after the session that they looked up what Diablo means. It's the Spanish word for devil. Those are five pretty disturbing Ouija board stories. If anyone has any other Ouija board experiences that they would like to share, please leave a comment below as I'd love to hear them.